Today, I'm really excited to be reviewing the Dbot Osmo T8 AI VI robot vacuum from Echovax. It's the most advanced robot vacuum I've ever tested. I put it through more tests than I think I've ever put a robot vacuum through before, and there is a lot to talk about with it. So, links in the description, and let's get started. The Dbot Osmo T8 is the top of the line robot from Echovax, and the main thing that separates it from most other robot vacuums is that it is equipped with artificial intelligence, which it uses to recognize and avoid obstacles. It uses LiDAR, or an invisible spinning laser on the top, to map out the house and navigate, but it uses this front-mounted camera to identify obstacles and learn about its environment. The idea is to solve the persistent problem of robots getting stuck on cords and other small obstacles in your home. I also reviewed the Dbot Osmo 960 just a few months back, which was one of the first AI robot vacuums ever released, which was also from Echovax. So you might be wondering what's so different about this new T8. So before we get to all the tests, let's talk about specs. First, it has all new hardware related to its AI. So it has a brand new processor. It also has a brand new camera. They also updated the software related to the AI, including the algorithm, and they gave it a larger what they call object library, which is where it can recognize socks, shoes, cords, mats, etc. And we're going to talk more about this object library later on during the AI tests. Another big upgrade was with the LiDAR system. They gave it all new hardware here as well, including a new DTOF laser sensor, which gives the T8 two times better range. For example, the 960 could reach out about five to six meters with its laser. This one can reach out 10 meters, and it's also four times more accurate, detecting objects as small as two millimeters. All of these LiDAR upgrades give the T8 better performance in larger spaces, as well as more accurate custom cleaning through the app, like with the no-go lines, which we will also discuss later. So we test suction and airflow on robot vacuums, and the T8 was really powerful. I measured 24 CFM of airflow on its Max Plus power setting, which means it's tied with the Echovax Dbot 950 for the most powerful modern robot vacuum I've ever tested. I also test suction numbers with a manometer, and I do that a little bit differently than some of these other companies, so my numbers are generally lower than a lot of them come up with, but relatively speaking, it's the second most powerful suction numbers I've ever seen, second again to the Dbot 950. So as you would expect, did amazingly well with tests like the crevice pickup test, clearing huge swaths of the 8th inch and quarter inch crevices in the 5 minute run. That power is complemented with a much bigger battery than the 960. The T8 now has a 62% 5200 milliamp hour battery, giving it a whopping 3 hours of runtime on low, basically matching the best battery life numbers out there at the moment. One of the most basic things, of course, is how well it picks stuff up off of hard floors and carpet, and I was more than a little bit impressed with this. This test is honestly pretty subjective. One of the things I look for, though, is a clean pickup without a lot of scattering of debris with its side brushes, as well as the ability to pick up the entire amount on the first attempt, and the ability to pick up heavy debris like sand on hard floors, something that's not easy for most robot vacuums. And the Dbot Osmo T8 was right up there with the best I've seen at this most basic task on both hard floors and carpet. On our deep clean test where we embed sand into medium pile carpet and then weigh the bends before and after a five minute run, it scored an 80 which only about one in four robot vacuums can do, so definitely above average. The Osmo in Dbot Osmo T8 means that it's also a mop. You can attach the included mop pad to the bottom of the unit, and it will automatically recognize when it's attached and switch to mop mode. They give you a reusable washable pad as well as some disposable ones. It also has a pretty advanced water tank where you can adjust the water flow level in the app. The point here is that the Dbot Osmo T8 did really good in our mopping tests. With the dried coffee stain, it cleared the entire field in one run, which was kind of expected since coffee isn't that tough of a stain to clean, but it also did really good with the V8 stains, which is not so easy, especially for a robot vacuum. I really do need to set up a mopping bot competition at some point to really figure this out, but anecdotally, this is the best performance I've seen to date with a robot vacuum mop combo. It also has no mop zones in the app, but let's talk about navigation and the no-go zones first. So as I mentioned, the T8 uses its LiDAR sensors to map out your house, but after it creates that map and you have
have the advanced mode enabled, you can then do all kinds of things, like create no-go zones, which are lines and or boxes in the app that you can draw with your fingers to keep the robot from going places that it's likely to get stuck, which is a feature I've been promoting since they first came out, and I think it's super useful. It also has no mop zones, and this is the same basic thing as no-go zones, but it only applies when the mop is connected. It has room select, where you can name rooms, and custom cleaning, where you can tell it to go clean one specific room and then return to the base. In terms of navigation and coverage, I found it to be as good or better than similar premium LiDAR robots. It was efficient and its coverage was excellent. Let's move on to the AI tests. We tested this in a variety of ways, and the results were actually pretty fascinating. As I mentioned before, Echovax updated the so-called object library with a T8 to automatically recognize a lot of stuff on the first try, things like chords. And in our tests, I found this to be nearly perfect. In probably 90 plus percent of the cases, it would see and recognize the chord and avoid it, no matter if it was the first time it had seen it or not, no matter if the chord was large or small. But there were a couple of times when it was just unlucky. like. It it approached the cord wrong and it didn't avoid it, but as I say, I think mostly that was just an unlucky approach. One of the interesting tests, though, was regarding the things it did not have in its library. For example, these orange cones. The first time I ran this test, it did not avoid them and since they were too light to engage the bump sensor, it pushed them around. Though by the end of that run, it started to recognize them as obstacles, and during the second run, it had learned that they were to be avoided and navigated around them. The same thing with my keys. It didn't avoid them at first, but after a few times, it not only knew what they were and avoided them, but I could throw them in front of it, and it would immediately recognize them and begin evading. Though I'm not sure if that was a result of some other technology or not, but in in any case, it recognizes keys now. There is another obstacle that's really important for robots to recognize and avoid on the first try no matter what, so I thought I would test to see if that particular obstacle was in its library by using this fake novelty version of it, and it did seem to have it because it avoided it on the first try. So nice job, Echovex. The AI isn't perfect, but it's getting really close, and it's certainly better than anything else out there if your goal is to avoid the robot getting stuck on obstacles like cords and other things that you can't use the no-go line for. Also related to the camera is the on-demand live video. This is where you can control the robot with your smartphone and look through the camera to check in on your pets. You can also use the speaker to talk with them from anywhere. Moving on to the negative stuff. The first thing to note was the size. It does seem to be a little bit wider and a little bit taller than average. It's 3.7 inches tall, so you might want to check the furniture that you need it to go under because if it's shorter than that, it could be an issue. I noticed something during the hair tangle test, which actually I forgot to mention at all earlier, so I'll mention now. It did above average at hair tangles for robot vacuums, getting no hair caught with the 5 inch hair test and about 41% of the hair caught with the 7 inch hair test, so above average. Anyway, the point is that during that test, I noticed that a rubber part on the roller brush had worn off, which is something I've not seen before with Echovax brushes. It's probably a bad brush or something, but with all the things that could have gone wrong, that's probably one of the least worrisome since you can buy replacements so cheaply. But it is is worth mentioning. Another thing was the room select feature, which was pretty limiting. I couldn't define the borders of the rooms, and I didn't see a custom naming option, so you just had to choose icons for the kitchen or living room, etc. Not a deal breaker by any means, but there you go. I suppose I'll know more good stuff and bad stuff about the T8 later on, as I plan on taking it home and using it for my home robot. So be sure to subscribe to Vacuum Wars for more content on the T8. Links in the description, and thanks for watching.